Um, hello, everyone. As uh, you can see, I will be talking about the SDN options available for Apache Cloud Stack. Um, I'm Alexandre Macioli. I've been involved in Cloud Stack since 2012. Uh, sorry. Uh, commuter, I designed and built a global ACS cloud with some 17 zones in 13 countries. Uh, was a support customer of Shayblue for many years, and now am a cloud architect at Shayblue. Designed yeah, 50 plus ACS features through the years, and network enthusiast, and with enough, I'm Brazilian, but I love skiing and not football. So, quick introduction to SDNs, just to make sure we are all on the same page. Uh, what is a SDN? Uh, SDN is just a fancy way to say that your network is created by software, but also it means a bit more, that you're decoupling your data and control planes. You are distributing your routing, etc., etc. The SDN ecosystem has lots of options, some better than others. I'll be talking to, about two specifically, VMware, uh, NSX, and OpenSDN. The architecture of any SDN, you have your distributed policies and a centralized policy definition by orchestrator and controller, that's true for all SDNs, uh, and the enforcement is distributed in all your hosts. And there you have a logical view of two networks, virtual networks, uh, managed by SDN. On top, we see the logical view. You have a green network, a blue network. Traffic goes from A to B via some path. And here we can see the physical, how that's on your host, hypervisors, your entire IP fabric. When using this, then that becomes invisible to the end user completely. So these are the options we have in CloudStack. Tungsten Fabric, the integration was released in 418. It was uh, done by two companies working together, Inno and Evark. Unfortunately, the project was abandoned at about 80% completion, but it works with that said in our labs used. I did a presentation on that. It does work really well. And there's now the integration of VMware NSX, which we are actually performing for a customer and is going to be released on 420. The Tencent Fabric was abandoned by Linux Foundation, unfortunately, and by Juniper. Juniper Networks uh, just decided to let the project die. And now it's being resurrected as OpenSDN. I'll go in more detail on that later. But first, let's have a look at NSX, and then we'll have a look at OpenSDN. Uh, OpenSX is the SDN platform for VMware, very scalable, very capable, also very, very, very expensive. Brief history started as some, as some research projects at Stanford. Uh, then the guys there started this company, Nisira. Uh, there was an early plugin for CloudStack for Nisira on 4.0. I tried it some 12 years ago, it actually worked. Then it was abandoned, especially because VMware bought Nisira for an uh, obscene amount of money. And then they integrated it very tightly in the vSphere ecosystem. Uh, in 2017, they created an SXT that was a bit decoupled, and now NSX is just an SX4. There, there used to be different versions, different types, now it's just one. And it works basically only with VMware. NSX uses logical routers like NSDN. Here we can see what they call a tier zero gateway which takes care of your north-south traffic. 
your BGP peering, everything going upstream. And that runs on VMs and is horizontally scalable by deploying more of those VMs. And you have the tier one gateways, which is the really interesting part, is your east-west traffic. The routing is all done directly in kernel. So every time you add a new hypervisor, you're adding more routing capability as well, capacity as well. It has a concept of transport zones, which is kind of a label. Uh, VMs can talk inside the same transport zone. On the integration that uh, we've done, a transport zone is basically the same as a cloud stack zone. There's a mapping one to one, but it doesn't necessarily need to be like that. You potentially could have multiple cloud stack zones in the same transport zone and have VMs from an isolated network in one zone, talk to another in another zone. So that's an important concept, and that also exists in other SDNs. And it can manage traffic through classic VLANs and through overlays with all kinds of encapsulation. Geneve being the proprietary one that came from Nisira and that uh, Jerry, Vexlan, et cetera, are yeah, standard open source ones. That's how it looks on your VMware host. Each host gets a new IP address, which is your virtual tunnel endpoint, and all traffic is encapsulated on top of that IP. Your tier zero gateway, it advertises all routes from your networks that are from your tier one gateways or networks attached to it upstream. In the case of the cloud stack integration, it just advertises everything that the tier one gateways are connected to. So the tier one gateway in this case will be the functional equivalent of the cloud stack virtual router. It is routing all the traffic between your VPC tiers. The reason why this was needed specifically by this customer is that in a, say, in a VPC, passing traffic through the cloud stack uh, virtual router, you can do three, maybe four gigabits, and that's it. The virtual router just isn't capable of passing more traffic than that. But with a distributed uh, SDN, you can do 20, 30 gigabits between tiers without a problem. It has the concept of segments instead of networks or port groups. And let's see how our VPC looks in NSX. So the tier one gateway is the same as the virtual router. And there you have our connected networks, three tiers with the routes advertised upstream. There are new offerings. There's the concept of routed mode and knotted mode. Classically in CloudStack, you only have routed mode, sorry, only have knotted. Uh, but here you can also route, so you can have VPC tiers that are routed directly to the, let's say, public IP, uh, especially, used, especially useful for enterprises. That's something that we are actually adding to CloudStack itself to the virtual router support for routing. There, it already exists for IPv6. Actually, IPv6 you can only route, you cannot not. And uh, we started working on routing for IPv4, and later on we work on dynamic routing. You have your knotted offering, your routed offering, nothing special to see that there's the difference. You can see here we have address translation, and here just pure routing between all the tiers and here, and then BGP period or OSPF or whatever you want to set up. These are all the functions that we have implemented. Basically, the same that is now. If you use this, it looks the same. The UI doesn't change. Uh, we did keep the VR. In a NSX network, the CloudStack VR 
works pretty much the same way as in a shared network. Is the helper VM doing DHCP, DNS, or user data, everything. This ensures that any new features that we add to the virtual router, which are not routing specific, will also be compatible. Now, talk. that's basically the integration of NSX, but as the world is changing, interest in VMware is going down for obvious reasons. So what can we use uh, on open source to do the same? There is open SDN. So brief history, uh, Contrail systems started developing uh, SDN solution. They were bought by Juniper, very successful product. Then Juniper decided to open source and donated to the Linux Foundation as Open Contrail. Open Contrail started being quite widely adopted. I was rebranded as Tanks and Fabric for internal reasons there at Juniper. And at some point, for some reason, they decided to abandon the project. But the community, the users of Tanks and Fabric, got together and are resurrecting it as OpenSDN. And the platform is the same, the integration with CloudStack still works all the same. So we have the same architecture. I had hidden the slide. I don't know why my PowerPoint thought it needs to be shown again. My apologies. So on OpenSDN specifically, you have these four modes of operation for the actual routing. You can use the PDK or just use the Linux kernel. There are some smart network cards that process the routing locally. Uh, most of the time, you use kernel or the PDK, but there are other options. It's quite powerful, and you can mix it as well. We can, in the same host, have different NICs using different uh, methods of routing. It's all based on containers. The management, database, everything is a few dozen containers running on Docker, which makes it very, very agile. You can distribute your management plane in many dozens of hosts if you want. Let's see how it looks in CloudSack, the integration. So here I'm creating isolated networks in a zone that's backed by, well, there says Tungsten Fabric, now OpenSDN. They have different seeders because I want those to talk at some point. So these are in three different data centers, Prague, Anger, and Rio. This, I actually built this at my office in Prague at my girlfriend's place in Anger and my parents' place in Rio. So it's all actually built over the internet. My networks there in CloudStack, how they look in OpenSDN, and then I created network policies. What are those? Network policy is just when you define that you want traffic going from a certain network to a certain network and which traffic or even which VM to which VM. In OpenSDN, each network has its own uh, VRF, its own virtual routing forwarding, completely isolated. It uses XMPP to create the routes, and you create, can create whatever policies you want between networks, and has lots of options there. I use just very basic ones here. Uh, there, you see, is my Tensorfly provider, which is just my manager. You can have a manager for each zone or have a global manager, whatever way you want to set up. I had just one manager that shows multiple times. So in network policy, um, sorry, in this things and fabric tab, we had several options of the logical router, tags. There are many advanced options, service groups, things like that. We'll uh, have a look only at network policy. So I created a network policy called routine policy one. And I apply that policy to each of my isolated networks. 
And as soon as you apply your routing policy to a network, the fabric knows how to move your packets between networks. Do for all of them. That's how it looks there on OpenSDN. And then I create rules for my networking policy. In this case, I wanted to pass UDP, ICMP. Uh, sorry, you can use UDP, SMP, or any protocols there, really. Uh, the routing policy looks just like firewall rules anyway. Um, I created a few rules on which we can it will show later. That's how my rules show on OpenSDN. And I had this infrastructure where I had connectivity uh, over the internet between all these sites. But my isolated networks, they were exactly that. They were isolated. They couldn't talk to each other. But with the routing policies that I created and apply them, I can pass HTTP, ICMP between all my edge sites. I create a structure of a core and edge sites in this case. So from the core to the edge, I can pass any traffic and between edge sites, just HTTP for something like object storage replication and ICMP just for them to know each other that they are alive. And that is created fully through the Cloud Stack UI. No need to go and touch the OpenSDN UI at all. And you can also use it for your management plane. So if you have several data centers and you don't have private connectivity between them, you can use OpenSDN for your Cloud Stack management networks, just overlay it over the internet. It has, you can do MPLS, GRE, VXLAN, uh, whatever you want, and it automatically encrypts the traffic as well. So status of the integration so far, we have uh, most of the functions that currently have uh, of egress rules, firewall rules, port forwarding, load balancing, etc. Plus all these ones in the right, which are very, very powerful. We look at that network policy and rules, but there's also application policies. You can have a group of VMs tagged as database uh, in different data centers and create an application policy that your VMs target as database can talk to any other VMs target as database. You don't need to connect a network to a network, just a group of VMs based on an application. It has a distributed firewall that runs in the kernel as well, so also scales horizontally as you grow, and quite a lot of much more advanced features. At the moment, the Tungsten Fabric tab, these advanced features, are only accessible by the root admin. That's a key part of the integration that wasn't finished yet. But hopefully at some point soon. That's what's still missing as of 420. Uh, the highlighted ones are the ones I personally think are the key ones that need to be integrated, but there's lots of features. Uh, it's a very, very powerful platform. And those are proposed enhancements that we logged in GitHub. Uh, the support for VMware SX, yeah, we can forget about that. But there's quite a few interesting enhancements that we can apply there. And yep, as I mentioned, the project was kind of abandoned and resurrected. So let me talk quickly about the OpenSDN community. The Tungsten community members had some really big names. Some of those uh, are now part of the OpenSDN community. There are some companies that use it very heavily. There's quite a bit of investment there. So far, unfortunately, no one is using it together with CloudStack. 
but that I believe will change soon with this big uh, Broadcom-led uh, migration out of VMware, this exodus out of VMware into the KVM world. Tons of Fabric became OpenSDN. then. Linux, it was Linux Foundation. Now, we don't know where it's going to go. Maybe Apache Foundation, hopefully. We shall see. But the community is alive. Number of commits is ramping up again. It's getting into a very healthy state. There are a few dozen committers already. Quite good for a project that's only about six months old. Uh, there are monthly meetings. Everyone is uh, welcome to join and participate. There's a website, GitHub, there's a guarantee for code review, Slack channel, there's all, all the structure is there already. So anyone interested in SDN options for KVM, I would recommend having a look at that, join the mailing list, etc. And that's it. Uh,